mate, who I've been learning 40k with, has a 3D printer, and I was well impressed with the level of detail that was coming out of it. He printed me a scythe tyra jewel, but I had plenty of tyranids to paint, and so I had no real motive to get a printer of my own. Temptation arose when biovores with spore mines became so potent. But look at them. They look so goofy. Why does it have an orc head? It looks like no other Tyranid. Plus the spore mines. They kind of look really low effort. Like, did you do these in a Friday afternoon and just wanted to get to your weekend? Okay, whatever. Anyway, but then it happened. Didn't see it coming. Didn't ever expect it. Some things just blindside you. Just over a year ago, I had this. And today, I have this. Yep, the pile of shame is gone. My last unpainted model was finally finished, other than a few indulgences like the Dimericon and the Biovores. Um, my swarm is pretty much solid. I have lots of choices and variety, and so maybe time for a new army. When I was first deciding what would be my first army, it was 50-50 between Tyranids and the Death Corps of Krieg. And I picked Tyranids so I could have fun with colour and do whatever I wanted due to lack of a uniform. So, I could sell a kidney to afford a few Forge World models, but I'm like Eddie Hitler. I have to sell a kidney to raise the cash for all this stuff. So I don't want you messing it up. Well, I offered them mine. Yeah, well, they're not much use pickled, are they? I looked around online, and there are some really wonderful 3D models for the Krieg. In fact, I'd say they've, I think they're actually better than the pro stuff, and there's more variety as well. Okay, in we go. I went with the Frozen Mighty 8K. The larger build plate results in just a tiny loss of detail. Here, check this. Even zoomed in on a screen, it's barely noticeable. So on the tabletop, no way. Plus, I plan on vehicles and probably more big bugs. So mighty it is. Amazon had just screwed up an order for me and had given me a 10% off next purchase coupon. So away we go. Let's get the essentials. The printer. Frozen Aqua Grey 8K 3D printing resin. Pickle containers with strainers. A box of Salimo 99% isopropyl alcohol. A box of gloves. And an Elegoo Mercury curing machine. Right, let's give this a test toast. I filled the resin vat and ran the test print. It came out fine. So I dropped a file onto a thumb drive and tried to print. Nothing. I tried again. Nothing. Just couldn't access it. Wouldn't allow me to print. Turning to the internet, I discovered you need to run it through a program first. Not a bloody word of this in the instruction booklet, but as I rummaged around in the thumb drive that came with the printer, I found a folder with two options already loaded on there, Lychee and Chitubox. You know, it's nice that you provided these, but pointing me to them in the instruction booklet would have been even more useful. So Lychee has a better auto support generator, so I went with that drag and drop, arrange the models on the plate, export to the thumb drive, take to the printer and hit print. It bobs up and down, building the models from the feet up, and when done, the plate rises all the way to the top. First up, protection. I have a normal respirator, but if it proves inadequate to filter out the fumes, I have my Israeli gas mask, which I keep in my car after having had to drive through a wildfire smoke bank and with eyes burning and fighting for breath, if it had been a bit bigger, I'd have been in real trouble. I went with Israeli made because I guess with them making them for civilians and with likely use, they aren't going to cheap out. Plus, civilian use. Quick to don, easy to use, no frills, no hassles. Okay, put down some paper towels, take off the shield lid thing, put on some gloves. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I don't know, be my guest. I know how much you like snapping on the latex. Then get the two pickle strainers ready, both filled about half or three quarters of the way up with the alcohol. Scrooge time. In order to save on resin, using the plastic scraper to get the excess resin off the top of the build plate and back into the vat. It's only a few drops, but you know, over time, it's gonna add up. 
unscrew the plate, get the metal scraper, and giving it some elbow, pop everything off. Really lean into it, otherwise it may skip and you may slice up some models. Who's there anything about slicing you up? Wipe down the build plate with a towel to remove any stray chunks and put it back on, tighten the fastener. Then, gently running the plastic scraper along the bottom resin vat to check for residue. One print I left running overnight. In the morning, nothing had come up. I tried again, again, nothing. When I emptied out the resin using that little sieve you can see to the right of the printer to catch any possible chunks, I discovered that a bunch of bases had printed and stuck to the bottom of the resin vat, blocking the building of anything else. So now I check between prints. I removed all the resin, used a plastic scraper to get them off, and then used alcohol and a paper towel to gently clean the whole thing. I've since learned this can lead to clouding, and so bought some microfiber towels and cut them into little squares, and this works much better. No alcohol, just make sure to avoid the cut ends so nothing flakes off. So, after checking for lumps and finding nothing, the models go into strainer one. And then, after putting the lid back on the printer to ensure nothing goes into the resin, pump them up and down a bunch. Putting the lid back on isn't just to stop any alcohol droplets landing in there, because I have a cat, there's always stray hairs floating around in the air, and I want to keep as many of them out of the resin as possible. Then, switch the models to the other strainer and give them a second rinse. The odd stray droplets of alcohol are great to catch with a towel to help you clean up the stray specks of resin on the floor. Relocating another paper towel, drain the tray and spread the models out over the towels and let them dry for a bit. First go, I cured them and then tried to remove them from the supports. Pipes snapped, guns broke, it was a real disaster. This is a mistake. So again, back to the internet to seek advice. Ah, right. Prior to curing, crack a beer and drop everything in warm water and let it soak for a little while. Give them the odd stir and then the base and supports just pop away. No damage, no worries. One after another, the Grim Guard pop free of their support frames. For the guns and other more delicate bits, I could just try and pop them free, but let's play it safe. So I used an X-Acto to cut away a bunch of struts so I could extract them without any breakages. And this is also the best time to remove any little lumps left where the support came away. Basically, instead of mold lines, you were trimming away support stubs. On vehicles, this isn't as much of a bother because, well, they actually look kind of cool, like little extra rivets and bolts here and there. There are some other small supports here and there that you need to get rid of, along gas mask pipes, inside coats and cloaks, and these are easily cut free. So, once they are dry, into the curing machine they go for about five minutes, and boom, parented. Oh, and here's the biovores, the seed that has started me on the path of getting my own printer. I printed them along with some really nice spore mines and I picked up the file for those for about a dollar or something, and they are much nicer than the Games Workshop ones. Okay, time to start building an army. Let's see how this goes. Astra Militarum, heavy on the Krieg. Off we go.